What's going on guys? It's Gendo here and you're probably wondering, oh my god, what did he do to his face? I got myself some shave and a haircut. What do you think? Comments below. But this is episode 31 and we're going to be taking on Loughborough University in this Boxing Day showdown. Loughborough are still in first place, but after the month plus that we had, we started to move up the table ourselves. Since our last live com of Hedensford Town, we then went on a five match winning streak, four matches in a row in the league, as well as a win in the FA Trophy North qualifying round versus Hitchin once again, which got us into the first round proper. But as you can see, versus Filed, we lost 3 0, so we're out of the trophy. We're just strictly in the league now, and we just need to continue this nice fine form. As as you can see, we beat Brackley by the score of 2-1, North Ferriby by 3-1, a goal fest against Leamington, 5-4, and it also helped that Ross Sykes, one of the Leamington defenders, gifted us a couple of goals to help give us the lead in this one, to help give us the win at the end. Marsden and Elliot Pond, the other two goal scorers for the side. But then Salford, we beat them. Salford being really, really bad this season. They're down in the 20-21 the range. We beat them 3-0. But then, unfortunately, that, that winning streak just stopped thanks to AC Filed. But then in the league, we drew against uh, FC United by the score of one all. Anthony Steer getting us the goal here, nodding the matchup at one apiece, but we could not find an equalizer. So what do those 13 points in five matches mean? Well, that pushes us up all the way into fourth place. 35 points, actually 34 points on 20 matches. Loughborough are still with a commanding lead at the very top there, but they're now eight points clear with Altrincham, Filed, and Tamworth, the playoff-bound teams so far. As it is, uh, Ilkston, Hensford have dropped out of the top five. They didn't have a great month, but everything can still change. We're only halfway through the season. There's still a lot of matches left to be played. And like I said, this Boxing Day showdown is obviously going to start a run of four matches within the next nine days. There's going to be a lot of tired legs, but if we can somehow come away with results out of those four matches... I have a strong feeling that we're going to stay in the playoff spots for the rest of the season. So let's get into the match now versus Loughborough University. It's going to be a big one. So we're switching the team sheet around. We're using a 4-3-3 now as Loughborough University are apparently weak against it. They have conceded most goals against it. So let's try and use it up. I do have the strikers. Callum Armstrong and Tom Marsden can play a striker role, although not that great. But let's just take a look at the rest of the players. Luke Chambers is going to be a net. Coupe, Kennedy, Norris, and Duxbury along the back line. Andre Jones, Charlie Gorman, and Lewis O'Brien getting his very first start for the club. Lewis O'Brien, a center mid. He can also play a little bit of defensive mid, even though it doesn't show it up here, but he does have the stats like 11 marking, 10 tackling. He could be a defensive mid if I decide to drop him back, but he's 21 years old and looks fairly solid for this side. And then the three strikers up front, Anthony Steer, Tom Marsden, and Elliot Pond. Benny Aguihan's going to get a little bit of a break. Want to try and use him as a super sub as much as possible because I think at this point in time in his career, that is pretty much what he's best at. But other than that, he's still one of the top goal scorers for the club. He has eight goals in his 17 appearances, so not bad. But I want to try and use him as a sub on this day. All right, so let's kick off and see what happens. Cross fingers, hopefully it's for the good. Five minutes in, now Coupe with a throw into Marsden on the edge of the box. He's being bullied by two guys, ultimately gets the ball taken off him. But we do keep the ball in the attacking half as we get it up to O'Brien. Back to Norris, has to play it back. Long ball forward, finds Tom Marsden, and the deflection, the keeper went the wrong way. The deflection almost went in, and it goes out for a corner. Kennedy taking it, lays it off to nobody really in particular, and that's pretty much a, the worst possible corner you could take. Coupe with a throw in once again on that side. Out to Gorman. Gorman takes a shot but lasers it over the crossbar. 33 minutes gone. Goalkeeper punts it very long for Loughborough. It's over everybody. Adams just missing the post. The defense didn't know what to do there. Fortunately, he missed. All right, we got about eight minutes left in this half. Duxbury with a cross in. Anthony Steer, you're five yards away. How did you miss that? I guess it was a deflection. We do get a corner out of it. But Anthony Steer needs to do a lot better with that headed ball. Four minutes to go in this half, and Loughborough University coming forward with an attack. One of their few attacks all game, and the ball bounces off the post. Luke Chambers was leaning the wrong way. He would never have made it if that ball actually went in. So we come up to halftime, still nil-nil, and everything's looking really shaky on both sides. The defense not looking the best for both teams, but at the same time, the finishing for both sides 
not the best either. There's only one shot for Loughborough's side, two shots for ours that actually made it towards the net, and the goalkeeper had to put a hand on it, but seven shots in total, so the ratio really isn't all that good. We need to do better with our finishing. Uh, the boys aren't doing that bad out there. We are keeping the pressure on them. We are keeping the ball more often. So we just need to go out there. I think that this is going to be a one-goal game. Whoever gets that first goal is going to win the match. Goal kick, three minutes in. Loughborough University bringing it up, but Lewis Kennedy cuts that out. Unfortunately, can't get the ball, and Loughborough still on the ball, still coming forward in an attack. Our defense looking, oh, good clearance away from Coupe. But we still can't get the ball. This is this has been a big problem for us, is that we have a lot of possession in matches, but we can't come up with key possession at key times, like trying to get the ball away in an attack like this. Adams coming forth. Luke Chambers with a good save there. Off the ensuing kick, Andre Jones. He can swing it up to Coupe. Coupe didn't keep it going, though. That's rather disconcerting. Um, but Loughborough United University, I'm going to get that confused. I'm still getting it confused all game. Ooh, Ollie Norris with a good pass up. Elliot Pond trying to find Steer. Steer, he can shoot, but shoots it wide. What a tackle from Kennedy there, preventing, you know, he's in the box, so he had to be wary. You know, not a hard tackle. Don't want to give up a penalty at this stage in the game. Like I said, one goal at this point can turn the tide. Oh, that's some good passing through. Ah, and they finally break the deadlock. It's 1-0 to Loughborough University. After 59 minutes, geez, I thought our defense would have held solid there. But in the end, it just didn't happen. We were holding on all game. We had some decent amount of pressure. But at the end of the day, a missed tackle from Duxbury right there is the key factor in that goal. Loughborough once again on the attack just six minutes later. And, well, we're doing very well to keep them back. But there's a long ball over the top. They're doing very well with the long balls. We can't, you know defend those all that well our defensive line is like right around the middle i have it pushed slightly deeper but at the same time the defense needs to have the wherewithal to know okay this ball is going over my head i should probably drop back and the game doesn't allow me to do that just about 12 minutes from time off the throw and we have the ball well we had the ball before a long pass up forward when i have it set to short passes didn't really find the mark. Five minutes from time, we have some decent passing movement, but Benny Igihan just slamming the ball directly into an opponent, losing it, and that's not how you win matches. Especially when we've had the majority of possession for the entirety of the match, uh, we cannot just go away and give the ball to the opponent willy-nilly like that. But we do have the ball once again, and we are making a decent attack. Levi Walker coming through. Marsden, you know, do well to hold it up. Pass it off, Marsden. Okay, we get a corner. But Marsden taking those short angle shots, not really the best advised. And once again, another bad corner out to the front. And now with about 25 seconds left to go, this whole match was a case of having the possession, but not really doing much with it as that cross just goes well outside. And the game goes to Loughborough University by the score of 1-0. As I said at halftime, basically whoever got that one goal, that first goal, was going to win the match because both sides' defenses did very well. But at the end of the day, it was the poor finishing on our side that didn't lead to any goals. So Loughborough are still in first place after all this. I'm just, uh, yeah, don't don't look back on it. We were just unlucky. Uh, Loughborough is still in first place. They now have a 10-point gap. We dropped down to fifth, but we're still in the playoff spots. Look at how tight this race is for the playoff spots. Between second and ninth, it's only separated, just separated by five points. But we have reached the halfway point of the season, so it's still anybody's game. Let's take a look at the schedule, see when we will come back next. So just looking at the calendar ahead, a lot of matches between teams that are sitting roughly mid-table, aside from Tamworth and Fylde, of course, because they're sitting in the playoff spots. Then we have Staley Bridge, Chorley, Hyde United, Nuneaton, Geisley, and Ilkeston. I think we'll come back right here on the 1st of February against Geisley, since that's right at the end of the transfer window. And we'll see who gets brought in, who gets sent out, any more additions to the team. I don't want to try and you know force team chemistry by bringing anybody else on. So I think that my transfers will be left to a minimum. But that could all change depending on you know injuries and whatnot. So I think that we will come back against Geisley 
So until that time, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and you want to see more FM content on the channel. Any comments, suggestions, questions, anything else at all, please leave in the comment box below. But as always, this is Gendo with a shaved beard and all, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and peace out.